Good afternoon, Man 25 Gamers. In today's episode of Man 25 Gameplay, my opponent has the Washington Redskins, and I'm using this New Orleans Saints. And I uh, just want to get a gameplay with you guys, uh, share some stuff, talk a little bit about you know what I've been doing recently and stuff like that. So uh, my playbooks for this game, I'm using the New York Giants offensive playbook, and on defense, I'm using the 4-3 defensive playbook, uh, and specifically probably the more uh, typically I use the 4-4. Uh, defense. So let's hop into this gameplay. I uh, really like the New Orleans Saints. I'm actually strongly considering them um, because of the fact that their offense is very effective for my the way I use the Giants playbook. They're very versatile. They have two tight ends that are very good. They have uh, four or five receivers that could really contribute. They have a really good running back in Darren Sproles um, and so on and so forth. And we're already pausing the game. Come on, bruh. And uh, defensively, they're really not that bad. They have um, the rookie safety, who has pretty good hip power, pretty good speed. I like to use him. And then they have those two corners on the outside that they get their job done. I mean, they don't, they're not special or anything, but they get their job done for me uh, most times. And then also they have a uh, really good linebacking core. They got Velma, Hawthorne, Curtis Lofton. Um, they also have... Uh, Paralysis Harrison from the 49ers, and they have Victor Butler, and they have a, I think a, I think another linebacker I can't think of off the top of my head. So gonna get started here uh, playing the Redskins. Obviously, when you remember using RG3, and that's one thing I'm really starting to like about this defense is the I talked about it a little bit the last commentary, but the the reality that you have to kind of use the safety for everything to stay balanced and for everything to work properly, and that does limit you. Um, but at the same time, I think it also makes it a little bit better for you, in my opinion. Um, just because of the fact that you're always going to be in the middle of the field, which allows you to cover basically uh, about five yards verse, versus when you're on the sidelines. You kind of can only cover that side of the field. So, I don't know, it's, it's kind of a, it, it, I mean, it there's its flaws and its disadvantages, or excuse me, there's its um, advantages and disadvantages, but but I find that more often than not, I don't like it. I don't know why people are using this quick snap technique. It's really starting to get on my nerves, but, and that's what, I mean, because when they go so fast, it's, it's, it's not that I can't set my plays up, it's that I can't really think about my I, think I I have to just go um and that's a that's a good thing and a bad thing um if you have a solid uh a solid th philosophy in your mind and you you know ran a defense like I've been running 4-4 since last season um I know all the ins and outs of it but you know if you're just picking up something it's very difficult like, for example, if, if I was running, like, bear under or if I was running just a defense for fun, you know, one of my scheme of the week defenses or something that I just kind of pick up and, and work on just a little bit, I don't have the, I don't have all of the sound theory and stuff in the back of my mind. So in situations like that where you you don't have a whole lot of time to think, you have to kind of, you, you can get a step behind. But luckily with the 44, I, I never am a step behind, which is nice to have that, that know that in your back pocket that you know you're always going to be ahead of your opponent even when they try to quick snap you and that was ridiculous i don't even know what happened there holy smokes that's one thing you, you do want to do um you have to pay attention you have to have to pay attention to linebacker movement pre-snap unfortunately the way this game works is Sometimes, and see here I'm behind because I messed up my setup. So now we gotta just like let that go. Now one of the cool parts about the 44, one of the parts that I really enjoy about it is the fact that we could basically stop the run. Um, now there is a certain aspect of user skill and vice versa, but at the same time, it's not like the end of the world if you don't have good user stick because of that right there. You see that everybody's down on the box. So it's a situation where they have to run inside, basically forcing them at your user player, which in my opinion is a good thing. Some people don't like that. Um, there's also a way to run the 4-4 defense where it's a little bit better 
in terms of run defense, it does limit, in my opinion, it limits your pass defense because if your linebackers move, it messes everything up. So here, we got to watch out for slants. See, that's a thing, though. Like, that call right there is a situation where the 4-4 formation more so does it for you. Um, you don't have to necessarily do anything, which is nice because you can worry about other stuff. And in Madden 25, there's plenty of stuff to worry about. Now, uh, a philosophy that Z-Boy does, and you seem to be making a lot of adjustments. Really, with the 4-4, you don't have to make that many adjustments to send pressure. That's All the adjustments you've seen are me trying to make better coverage from what I've got um, you know so like there I just created a cover two shell sending two way pressure at the quarterback did it in like three seconds I know I have to stay on that slant route and there you go that's just kinda like first of all it's also you know it's kinda knowledge of your of where you're weak it's also knowledge of the formation and stuff like that so um, in today's video, you're going to see a lot of formations you probably have never seen me run before. Uh, I'm trying to start to develop a little bit more uh, to my offense and defense than I, instead of just that one slot trail. Um, I know a lot of stuff. I don't know how effective it always is. But I'm trying to work on like the mind game of Madden and like, you know, uh, when do you show this, this, and this, and that kind of stuff. So, Unfortunately, the, the way that version gaming works like I said before is you never have a, a sound like okay let me go down to this because he went to this you, you can't do that in virgin gaming you kinda just have to guess what he's gonna come out in and also real quick this is one thing that I don't do myself very well but this is a situation here I'm looking at his formation he can only send pressure off the right side obviously even though he's now see here uh, only send pressures off the right side so since he's gonna do that I'm gonna c continue with the screen pass and I could probably get a really good play to that screen because we're basically throwing where they blitzed. And there you see there's a screen, and that's a big game. It's little things like that that you can catch up with. Um, and so I feel like that's one thing that you can read pre-snap. Another thing you can read pre-snap is positioning of the cornerbacks. Um, so that's kind of some stuff I've been working on. Now this formation here is actually really, really effective. Um, why do I not run this more? It's mainly just because I don't think about it. Uh, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I just don't think about running it. Um, the reason I don't think about it is because it's a four wide receiver personnel. So I cannot audible to it from like, if I could audible to this formation, the quick audibles in it are very good. So it would actually be worth my while to audible to it. Unfortunately, the game does not let you. There's a heavy pressure play. And, and like, it's just a simple read uh, against a blitz. And that's the Snugs is probably, if I had to go with one blitz beater, I would take the Snugs. It's very effective against heavy pressure defenses. Alright. Um, in this situation, I want to check down. I really like this play from the 20 yard line or so. The Giants slot out and up. Basically what it is is it's a double move route. It gets very good at separation against zone coverage. It's also very good against cover zero. And I run some hot routes in it to make it a very good play overall. There you see the zone. And you see how it just splits the, splits the cover three. Like it's, it's, a, it's just really, really effective. And that will be a, a play that we're going to be breaking down when I do my Giants playbook guide. Uh, which should be coming up uh, hopefully in at least a week, uh, probably a week or two for me to get all the videos recorded and then you know of course you have to put it all together but hopefully by the end of Thanksgiving break which for me that would be the end of next week hopefully we'll have it up so hopefully, uh, looking for probably a week from tomorrow no two weeks from tomorrow, yeah two weeks from tomorrow so that would be launch date at like December the 3rd or something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to cover because, you know, there's a lot of like basic stuff that you carry over from playbook to playbook. And then there's also playbook specific stuff we use. Um, and so that's kind of part of the thing. One of the things I've been struggling with recently in my game, and I find it all the time, is I try to sometimes do a little too much. And when I do that, like I, I take some of the simple stuff out. So we're going to have a feature... At least I am for my portion of it. I don't know quite yet what Z is doing. But we're going to have like a feature in the guide that we're... Basically, 
if you have trouble like with adjustments or if you have trouble with it's basically gonna be like a dumb it down die like if you have trouble with adjustments or you have trouble with setups it's basically going to be this is what we're going to use for to, to teach you the game. And it's going to be offense and defense. We're going to show you how to run an offensive scheme with no hot routes. We're going to show you how to run a defensive scheme with no hot routes. And uh, it's going to be pretty cool. At least I think it will be. I think it will be beneficial. Get me on the middle linebacker so I can adjust him. If you guys watched the last video, you know that... That... Um, Single back bunch. Uh, you can kind of let those if they if they do run a streak out of single back bunch with uh, the 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 way we run 44 is you can just let those streaks go. The deep blues from the two deep will ease it. Will play that. You don't have to worry about that, which is really a, a very good advantage. All right, here second and 15. All right, I like this. I've been running this lately. Shifty. Basically, it's just a four man pass rush. The idea is the shifty will allow you to get a better pass rush one on one. There's holy balls! He threw that right and freaking through me. Wow. He's been running that play a lot too, so that's kind of his main read. And normally I'm all over it. I don't know what. I mean, I was all over it right there. It just didn't give me the play. See, I kind of wonder what the. Uh, let's just call this crash three for fun. Put you in the purple zone. Let's just kind of see what he's got here. Probably going to be your di uh, halfback dive, I assume. Nope, play action. I want to see how that yellow sticks with it. Nope. Okay. Crash three. Uh, and that's one time, sometimes, like, we're, you know, videos like today. The, the, the way the, the zones play are different depending on, like, what the yellow looks like in pre-snap. So... Like the zone blitz, that yellow zone is the same. It plays the same as like a yellow zone from the cover three. Okay, so hopefully that you know kind of. So like those yellows are actually very good, uh, for the base play, um, because they're a little bit more deep. So they play more of the middle area, and then the, the yellow zones from too deep play more of the outside. So it, it's kind of just like what is better, you know? Th there's no set stone. But there is obviously advantages and disadvantages to both. To both. So I like to get Rick right here, so I can kind of read what he's doing. If the tight end comes on a slant, I know I gotta watch out for Moss on the post. Ah, uh, I should have seen that stupid slant. I thought Moss was gonna go deep. And see, that's why we like to sit, kind of just sit there for a second. But obviously, you can get caught. Uh, so. All right, first and ten. Back to the base play. Got a little bit away from it. Uh, I want to keep it simple. And this is something that I struggle with a lot is keeping it simple. I remember last time there was a slant. He probably just flipped the play. And I say you could just kind of sit there with Vicaro after the snap and uh, be alright. Oh, you suck. Five yard out. <laughs> Gosh, nice, nice, nice user skill there, buddy. So another third down and short. Now, if you guys remember last time on that crucial third down, he went to a little slant route. So if he does that again, uh, we should be all right against it. We're just going to user control it. I really like to back my coverage off and put him in flat zones. I really like that. Now, in order and see he's in that same formation, probably going to be the same thing. Nope, read option. Okay, that's a good that's a good triple option actually. That's a good play call. Haven't seen it all game. Um, one of the problems, I will say this: one of the problems when running the four four, actually in any defense, when running a defense against the option, um, when you always play the quarterback, which, well, I mean, just think about it. If you play the if you option play quarterback key, there's different options where they would do that. So, in a normal example, the the standard option is he'll hand the ball off. Or he'll keep it based off of what the defensive end does. And so, which, you know, that situation, you definitely want to just let, basically you're going to turn it into a quarterback dive, or a halfback dive if you option play quarterback. Well, with the speed option, what he just ran, where the quarterback runs off tackle and takes the running back with him, when you option play quarterback, your whole team will go to him, leaving the pitch wide open. So it's very, it, it's very hard to 
you know, it, you you kind of are stuck in a catch twenty two because if you don't option play quarterback, then you leave yourself open to big games if they big gains if they run a standard option. If you do option play quarterback, then when they run something like what he just ran, the speed option, then you get in that situation where the speed option actually tortures you as well. So, because of the fact that you're overplaying one of the two. So, it's kind of like whatever. It's kind of like what do you want to give up? Um, it's also a situation where you really don't have a ton of like room for mar- or margin for error. Now, the cool part about the 4 4 is if you always option play running back, you're actually. You're actually going to be all right against the quarterback scramble on the outside, because of the fact. Because of the fact that um, you're going to be okay because you can just use her that with the safety over top, whereas you could not use the running back in a speed option situation because the pitch will already have gone through. So I mean, yes, you could, but there's blockers over there too. So remember that. So whereas with a quarterback, there's no blockers. You just you just blow it up. So. It's kind of like a, it is a catch twenty two. At the same time, it, it kind of it's kind of a good thing that it kind of teaches. Well, it te- teaches me a lesson, as you saw. I just kind of learned my lesson there. But um, you know, in a situation where that uh, if he comes out on that look again, I'm no longer gonna let that. I'm not, I'm not gonna let that happen again. I just need to note that out of that option, out of that formation, he has the speed option. Oh, I hate that. I threw the ball to B. He was on the other side of the field, and the route messed up on me. Um, this situation, uh, with one minute and seven seconds left, I was trying to uh, hit like a deep post over the middle of the field. Unfortunately, I messed up the read. I really like this play, though. This is like my my one. If I need to go to a money play, this is what I would go to. This this deep post. Now, obviously, they had to catch the ball, but. But anywho, oh yeah, that's also another thing. Uh, when you're running this play or this formation, uh, I, I encourage you guys to check out the play double ends. The route to uh, Kenny Stills here on the left side is very effective for user catching. So you could use like a streak, and, and then you could take Sproles out here. You can motion Sproles out, do whatever you want with him, and turn him into a, a really deep wheel route. The cool part again is just that the fact that this wheel, this this little that little route just sits in, in no man's land. Now, obviously, if he fumbles the ball, then that just kind of sucks for you. But so the name of Madden 25. You fumble the ball even if they're not using the Niners or the Seahawks. But I don't get any fumbles because they know I'm too good for that. I think Madden 25 is like, Cody, seriously, you're too good for fumbles. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm not that good. I'm just saying. I'm just messing around. See, I'll just sit here. You know, I mean, I'll give up. I'll get, I mean, it's... Obviously, I didn't mean to sit there. I kind of just did it. <laughs> um, but... And just another mistake. Like I said, this game, you can't make mistakes defensively. And that's one of the things that I, was, I need to start talking to more people about. But you cannot make a mistake um, in your coverage. Now, you can make a mistake in your pressure, and you can be fine. You know, if the pressure doesn't get in, that's not the end of the world. The, the end of the world is, is when you blow your coverage. That's the end of the world in this game. Because if you blow your coverage in this game, you might as well just give them seven points. I mean, that's kind of like, see here, i got to stay with Moss. I have to do that. Because I know, I mean, I've been burned so many times. So, like, I know that that is a, a deep option. So he's going to run it again. I, mean, I have to get. I'll be, I have to be all right with him getting the underneath. Now that play you just saw there was actually a pretty good situation where I could have tried to jump it because I set myself up for success. I kind of hedged my bet with the way that I played the, put the zones out there. They would have actually kind of hanged with Santana Moss, but unfortunately I was just being an idiot. So we got our standard base play here. Send it off the uh, side of the field here. I'm going to option play running back. Because I remember that it was either this or one of the other sets that he ran in the option. Okay, so he's, he's liking to do the streak slant underneath concept. Which is really actually a pretty good play. Because there's really not a whole lot I can do about it. In terms of like, usering it. 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna heavy up my middle coverage. Now I'm gonna jump back, and there you see there. That's the that's the idea you have to do. And that's why I talk about um like I said the two deep yellow zones. They play more to the outside. The cover three yellow zones play more to the middle. And there was a cover three example of a cover three yellow zone. Um, so I ended up actually locking him up pretty good there. Uh, we're going to get one kick return, I think, but he probably will squib it. If, he, if it was me, I would squib kick it, but that's just kind of up to him. Uh, I think we're going to get balled half, though, because we did win the toss. We should have probably kicked off. Yeah, pretty good call there to squib it. I think we're actually playing a, decent, a pretty decent player. I mean, he likes to quick snap, which, I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, a lot of people do, but at the same time, is it the most effective? Is it not? It's not really. It's not really anything. This is kind of something that people do, but obviously he knows how to do the quick snap. So that's obviously another thing. Oh, Darren Sproles. So considering putting Josh Morgan back there instead of Sproles, because I do like to have Sproles for other things other than kick returning, it really doesn't. And really, I mean, in this game, I mean, kick returning is pretty important, but at the same time, a lot of people have been going to the short kickoffs and stuff like that. So if they're just going to sh kick it short, why would I even need him in the game to tire him out on a play he doesn't even get a touch on? So it's kind of a, up to you. Oh, Darren Sproles. This whole wide receiver screenplay really isn't that bad. Now, uh, one of the things, I don't know, I haven't really decided yet. I'm, I'm, I'm really back and forth on whether to throw it to the running back or the wide receiver. Here I want to show you the wide receiver. If you throw it to the wide receiver, you get actually better blocking, in my opinion. But if you run the running back, you have a little bit better of a shot for a big play potential. So once again, it's kind of like that, you know, give and take of Madden 25. But there's a lot more. And that's one thing that I don't like about Madden 25. A lot of people are... A lot of the, you know, a lot of people are complaining about defense, and I think they rightly should. But at the same time, you know, it's it's not the end of the world. But I would say that the game definitely is, is more offensive. Now, that was a really weird thing. If you guys saw there, that was a computer player that he had there. And I'm just going to go for it because, you know, I don't really care. But that was a computer player he had on that route right there. He was not user controlling him, and he played... He was sitting on the Jimmy Graham, and then he jumped right back onto my guy that was standing wide open. I don't know how that computer knew to do that. Wish I could tell my guys to do that. And Darren Sproles drops exactly what I wanted. Name of the game. Drop passes. So now we have to lock him up. Um, go back to the base play is the main idea here. Really, it's you know he hasn't really moved the ball that well. Um, especially for Madden 25 standards on the base play, so why not just keep giving him a heavy dosage of it? There's that slant right. I'm just going to sit on that, and he checked down. So, a nice read there. Um, one of the things I really, sh I mean, that probably, I think I blitzed it off the, I think I sent it off the left there, but if I sent it off the right, it would make sense as to why he got that completion. First and goal from the eight, uh... Probably just going to run the basic goal line defense. I really like my... I think my goal line defense is actually pretty good. Um, and there we go. Um, I think it's pretty good. Um, it's not the best yet. Uh-oh. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. That's me. Oh, any <sighs> son of a buck. If he were thrown like a corner out, though, I would have been in trouble because I missed the, I missed the click. And like I said, you know, you make one mistake in this game, you you can potentially be burned. So this is what you hit third and goal. Uh, I really like my chance here to stop him. Holy balls! I screwed up that setup though. Oh my goodness, that's pathetic. Luckily, he caught a screen pass. What happened there was I got caught in the lag. So, trying to set this play up. Where you have to make adjustments. Oh no, we gotta watch out. I think he's gonna be able to score here. 
we're not in a good position. Now we are. All right, we got it fixed. We got it fixed. This is going to send two people free at the quarterback. We're going to option play the running back, if you remember. There we go. And there's the user pick, and that's why I was sitting right on that. Really the only play in the four. I mean, you know, Madden would give me the ball at the one-yard line. Son of a buck, man. But basically there, you're, you're just the, the way we set up the play – we know that the sole responsibility is that middle of the field, and the spies are going to kind of sit there for a second to give us time to kind of figure out what route we want to take. Really like that. Really like that run. I liked it a lot more last year, but it's still pretty dang good. Um, the stretch is probably better. I just like the inside zone just because if I'm going to run that, I typically am going to run inside out of this. I don't really like this. I mean, the stretch is all right, but you see that? It has potential to get blown up. So, I kind of just stick to the safer bet of that inside zone run. The cool part about the Giants book is that it has a lot of different passing plays out of its running sets as well. So, it can really be a, a, you know, a pass set as well. Please pick that off. Thank you. I was hoping you would. That's a horrible read. I deserved every bit of that interception for touchdown. That is a horrible read. Basically, I just kind of threw the ball. Um, that's a situation where I wanted to... I mean, I didn't really want to, but I was willing to kind of just throw it up. And the reason for that um, was because I was trying to see if that route beat that cover three. And obviously, it doesn't, but that was just so stupid of me. So 17 to 6. We need to start scoring. And just like that, Darren Sproles. That, you know, that may be a reason to kick him back there at kick returner. I mean, he's so small, he just gets in through in and out places. And that's a huge kick return right there. That's probably the biggest kick return. I mean, we needed that one. We were kind of hurting bad. Why would you quit? You're up by 5. Please don't quit, buddy. Might be sending me a hate message. But, um, yeah, I mean, just working a lot on defense right now. I, you know, there's the run commit stuff. There's all that stuff. All those basic concepts that we already know how to do. I mean, run commit at a dollar. You got the, um... You have the three, three, five, two man underplay. If if they're only passing, you have the quarter, um, two man underplay. A lot of different things that we can work with. But can you? Do you have that foundational formation that really can change your game? You know, having that formation that can stop the run and pass. Having that formation that can send heavy pressure and still stop the run. Having that formation that can stop read option. I think it. I think that's the most valuable thing. Do you have that now? Dollar through the six. I mean, the run committee. It doesn't send any pressure to the quarterback. That's why I don't like it. Um, three, three, five, two men under. I mean, it's a great pass coverage and it gets great pressure, but it doesn't stop the run very well. Uh, quarter two men under. Same thing. Great pass defense, but doesn't send pressure and does not stop the run very well. Do you have that money formation that you can lock up in? And I think for me, the four four is that because it's almost like a perfect storm of 4-3, 4-6, 3-4. All three formations roll into one. And it's it's just my favorite. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm a genius. Who knows? Probably going to hit that little slant route. I'm not really expecting the run here. Because of all the hot routes he's doing. Okay. And like I said, you just kind of sit there for a second and make sure he's not going to play action. The 4-4 is so balanced, you can afford to do that. So, now obviously, pass. Uh, one thing also I want to touch on real quick is 4-4 run defense. Like I said, there are ways to make it really good, and there's also ways that you can really get screwed over in it. Um, played a lot of games with this, and the best thing I've found is to just kind of leave the play as is. And if you do that, you're still going to get your pressure. And you're still going to be balanced for the run. If you want better run defense, you want to spread your line and pinch your linebackers. If you do that, though, it, your pressure is not going to be as good. Not only is it not going to be as good, it's going to take you longer to set up. 
and it can be stopped by play-action blocking. So, three different things that misfire uh, gets pass, but you're better against the run. So, it's like, I guess, you know, what do you want to do? And then, situation where you want to send, so you want to be balanced. You want to have a really good run defense and really be able to still send pressure to get in against play action. But, in that situation, you'll have to use your control a certain player, and you have to sit in the A-gap. So, there's all sorts of different ways to run this um, to your benefit. But, again, at the same time... You know what? What outweighs the you know the good will outweigh the bad kind of thing. So, at what point do you you know that that kind of you know idea is is what the four four is? And like I said, I feel like I found the best kind of basic way. Um, hopefully, I didn't bump anything on the recording. I think I found the best basic way to do it. All right, so here just gonna check into this trips. Never really get a chance to run this formation. Um, it's actually one of the formations I will be willing to run because the quick audibles uh, from the trips tight end are very effective. So what I'll do is, like, when I come out in this dual tight end package, I flip the screen, and I'll run that, or run the empty giant, the empty spread, or the trips. And that's kind of like my three main, or four main formations out of this look because you don't have a running back, so there's no running threat. I mean, you could run with Graham, but really that's not that good of an idea. Here, I'm expecting heavy pressure off the right edge again. So that's why we're going to go with this standard little play. And there you see, again, I've only gone to it like twice, but I've gotten great results every time. And, you know, that's why I like it so much. And there's a lot more things you can do with the split offset. Um, there's some really good money routes in this um, one of which is this wide receiver deep end. I'll just show it to you real quick. What we like to do with this is we like to put the slot receiver on a drag. And I personally like to block and release pattern both running backs so that I know I have pass protection. And then I'll put more on an out route or an in route or whatever I want. And the main read though is the, the drag in and then you go to that deep post. So here man coverage. Really like that read for that little in route. Unfortunately, 24 was really sitting down on that, which is why I actually, you know, if I had to do it over, I would probably run like a an out route. Just because. Now, he ran man last time. I think he'll probably still run man. Um, I need to get rid of that ball fast. That was an absolutely dumb play call by me. I, I should have been in a different play. Should not have been in that play right there. Now, a situation where... You know, if he's been running, if he's going to run man, you can go to the PA slot fork. You have that corner route and the post route combination on there. Now, what I like to do with this is I'll take stills and I'll motion him across to the right side. He'll come into the slot, so it looks just like the screen, but now he continues to go over. So now you have two corner routes and a deep in route. So here, cover three, and I really like to pass lead up in routes against cover three. 59 made a great play, but, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's part of the game. Now, here in a situation where we really need to score uh, seven here, I don't really want to score three and tie it. We're going to go to our little slot out and up. Really like this play. I think it's one of the better plays that nobody talks about. And we're mainly trying to hit Lance Moore here. And there we go. Oh, what a play. Joss Wilson just, like, jumped through the roof. Okay, so that's a pretty bad interception right there. That was... Probably forced it a little too much. I mean, I thought I had the separation. When he got pressed, I probably should have just checked out of that. But, anywho. So, first and ten for him. So, now we got to lock him up on D one more time. Get the ball back, go score a touchdown, win the game. There it is again, that speed option. That time we got to the outside to contain it. And that's the difference between a touchdown and two-yard loss. A lot of people are underestimating that op the speed option. Pretty good play in my opinion. Alright, second 11 here. Uh, I'm going to hit him with the two-way pressure here. I'm trying to get an interception here. Oh, I'm standing on it. I'm, like, in his kitchen right there. All 
guy here. Probably going to be the same play call. Screen. We got four people over there. He still gains five yards. Same play call here. If he runs halfback dive, I swear. Got him. Oh, he caught that? There's two people. Oh, my goodness. That is really unfortunate. Option played the running back, dang it, and then he just falls forward for 25 yards. <sighs> oh my gosh, this is, I swear, dude, this, this is ridiculous. How is he even winning? Alright, this is kind of a big second down here. Um, I'm trying my best to stop that son of a biscuit, man. <sighs> Alright, right now we're in trouble because the freaking... We're option playing running back and he's still getting the run. Because of the fact that we have to spread... You know what, we'll just keep him in down. Now we got it. There we go. Okay. So that's one. We got him in second and long now. He's pro we got to call T.O. here, but um, probably in this situation, what you're going to be looking at, second and ten wise, is probably going to be a pass. So we have to play it like it is a pass. Unfortunately, if he runs it, there's your pass. I'm right there. Let him score here. You don't want you want to let him score. You just kind of want to keep him off of him because 2:22 left. You don't have a shot in heck. But uh, and that's why I say in all game, man, this guy's really not that bad of a player because really a pretty good read over the middle um, with the fact that I was underneath. And that's what I was saying about the 4-4. You know, it's either going to be a pick six, as you saw earlier, uh, you know, interception, or it's going to be um, a touchdown for him. And that's kind of like a hit or miss. Now, that's obviously a calculated risk. You know, it's not like we're – and if we would have – you know, but – Anyhow, that's just kind of where we're at now. Um, this situation, we need something big. Uh, we need to score, preferably before the two-minute warning. But it really doesn't matter because we're going to have to go onside no matter what. I don't like this cover three. He's been running. It's really starting to get on my nerves because I really don't want to throw the stupid out route. But he's been giving me that all game. I've been really stubborn uh, this game and have not taken what the defense gave me. And that's one thing that I, you know, that's one thing. If I could take the take that back in this game, that's what I do. I mean, that cost me the, the touchdown. I mean, literally, he's been calling cover three, and out route's been open all game. But I've been really too stubborn to take it. Now, really quick, this is kind of game planning 101. In this situation, you're two minutes and ten seconds. The idea is to get the, to keep the two minute warning on your side, no matter what you do here. So we're trying to throw the out route, get out of bounds. I'm probably not going to happen now. This is really, this really sucks right here. Um, we're trying to throw the out route and get out of bounds. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go to this um, play, PAY receiver in. And basically, we're going to try to hit the wheel route. Or if he's not pressing, we're going to go to the out. He is pressing like I thought he would. We got to get out of bounds here, and we got to kick the field goal. Hopefully, the field goal. Hopefully, we can kick it and still have that two-minute warning on our side. I don't know for sure if that will happen or not. So there's a field goal. Hopefully, we make it. So there we did. That's probably the best case scenario because we keep the two-minute warning on our sides. We're going to get a shot at the onside kick. If we don't get the onside kick, we now have a two-minute warning immediately after the play is going to run. And then we're going to also have the uh, – we're also going to have one timeout. So we're really got to, you know, take our chance at this. We need to make sure that, though, when he recovers it, we got to tackle. 
So now we've got to get him down before the two-minute warning. Unfortunately, that did not happen. That really, really pisses me off. Because that that was ridiculous. That's a Madden 25 for you. They break tackles, and you're screwed. And like I said, you make one mistake. Call your timeout. I mean, that's really all you can do. And now you just kind of got to sit and hope. You really screwed. I really screwed myself in the butt by not taking that stupid field goal earlier in the game. <sighs> Horrible game management this game, but it came down to the end. The fact that there was two situations where I was standing right there and still completed the pass. But you can't expect Man 25 to give you anything. That's why I, that's why I keep saying to you guys, you know, you could be right there. It really doesn't matter. And that's just the fact of the matter. Right here, we're hoping to God he does not throw the ball deep. If he throws the ball deep, we're kind of screwed. But we're really overplaying this. We were really overplaying that run. And he's still, you know, Madden 25. Madden 20. I mean, really, the run he's running is a really good run. It's the um, shotgun trio offset inside, go inside gut. A lot of people say it's the best run in the game. I mean, it's good, but, you know, obviously, I mean, we see here, I mean, it's a really good run. Now, here, you're going to see, okay, so here, you got to get out of this, but you're still run committing. You just got to make sure that he does not get outside uh, with this run commit. You still have, going to have to manually back those guys off. And, of course, let him score again. Got to let him score. Push him in the end zone. Whatever you gotta do. Obviously, it didn't work here. Good game, buddy. But man, it sucks. Oh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. That is definitely a tough one to lose right there. Cause I mean, we should have been. We should have won that game. There is no reason we should have lost this game. But it just comes down to the end of the day, guys. You have to have good clock management. This is a good lesson to learn. You know. Obviously, I don't win every game I play, um, but I do win a majority, and you would win a lot more, and I would win a lot more if I would get my head out of my rear end and actually use some good clock management skills. Probably here, this situation, you know, probably just trying to pound it in to give me a little bit, to get a little edge. I wish there was a way. I'm working on a way to stop. Probably something. Some kind of power run. Really not expecting the sneak here, but if he does it, yeah, power toss, yeah. Should have freaking, I ran commit to the right on uh, situation because of the motion. Uh, thought he may have been trying to seal the edge or something, which if you guys saw, watch my little Man 25 gameplay recap video, you, you saw why you need to motion that guy out to seal the edge. But that touchdown is, is uh, really nonchalant. I mean, right there, we were just trying to do anything we could to get the ball back. Ended up giving up you know, another touchdown, but it's really no big deal. We'll probably get out of here with a seven-point loss or, you know, whatever, so. But, good game. Um, definitely a lot you guys can learn from this video. Um, you know, you gotta learn from my mistakes. You, you, I did some things that were really good. also did some things that were really bad in this game, and hopefully you guys can learn from those. Um, you know, that's at the end of the day, that's why we do all these commentary, to help you get better at the game, so. Like, his defense is, like, not there, but for some reason in this game. That one pick I threw was really stupid, and then the other one I threw, like, the pick six I threw was dumb. Like, literally, I just beat myself this game. I mean, I really did. The defense was really there. I mean, it just came down to the fact that I just gave him way too many opportunities because my offense, I was just trying some stuff out and just really screwed myself in the rear end. So, good game. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the commentary. I think there's some useful stuff you can learn from it. Um, if you guys do like this, be sure to leave your um, feedback, please. I do want to show this one highlight here. This was earlier on in the game. I think it was in the second quarter. But uh, it was one of those, like, on a third down. It was, like, fourth down and eight. Um, I think it might have been this one. Yeah, I think it was this one. No, nope, it wasn't this one. Hold on a second. I'll find it. I 
No, it wasn't that one. I wasn't close enough there. Let's see if we can find it. No, not that one. Man, it was really early in the game. Yeah, right here. <laughs> Look at this crap. Alright, so I'm sitting there with 32. I know the play is running. And I'm sitting right on it. I'm holding triangle right now. Like, what are you doing? Like, literally, just put your hands up in the air and catch it. Like, come on, man. That was a pick six. But, whatever. Name the game. You know, he probably dropped some picks and stuff like that, too. So, that's just the way the game goes. Thanks for watching today, guys. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. And uh, be sure to watch some more Madden 25 commentaries for me. Thank you so much. See you next time.